welcome. Menu music. The music of waiting and choosing. Setting the tone and the atmosphere. Daring you to press the start button or soundtracking your endless choices in a menu. These are our favorite 20 chosen by you. And more specifically... Hor oh, there. Horky, Zenmus, Claudio, Longbow, Rudy, Siphlin, and me. This... It's from The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, on the N64. It's the opening menu theme, composed by Koji Kondo. Let's get to our first official pick. Our first official pick from Trackmania Nations Forever. This is the menu theme, composed by Do, D-O-O, -O, chosen by Horky. So foreboding and suspenseful. I feel like I'm about to play The Last of Us. Welcome, Horky. Thanks for the great pick. Yeah, it's an interesting theme because it feels like uh, so foreboding. It's just like a big builder, the way those drums are going with the toms, and then they pick up a bit here with the snare and the hi-hat. That bass just drones a lot on that single note with a bit of that orchestral bit rising around at the horns. Sounds like you're just slowly rolling into something. It sounds like you're going to attack at dawn, and it's almost dawn. But it's for a racing game. Probably the slowest theme ever in a racing game. But it is the menu theme, so you can get away with that. I love it. This next one is a really, really special main menu theme. Maybe the best one. Composed by Harry Gregson Williams. Chosen by Zenmus. It's from Metal Gear Solid 4. So you've got the really typical Metal Gear Solid kind of cyberpunky 
low, really uh, synthy bass. It's a lot of that attack on it. It's a bit of like, uh, almost like a rumba feel. Or like a slow kind of shuffle. Anyway, it sounds like you're sort of creeping along. The rising sort of strings. Kind of militaristic, but sad. And then that solitary lead instrument. That classical guitar. Because Snake is a classic. And he's ancient. But it's this sort of, in a whole track that's dominated by these electro synth futuristic sounds there's this one ancient instrument in the middle that's trying to reach out but it's not playing like a really powerful melody just a couple notes here kind of all it can really do there's a bit of delay on it to as it's sort of blending in or maybe it's like echoing or reverberating like memories or um, the kind of reverberations of your your actions and the effects they have the game couldn't even escape the brown filter <laughs> of the late 2000s. <laughs> so when I saw that the topic was going to be menu themes, the first game I thought of was Legend of Dragoon. And I was happy to see that Claudio thought the same. This is the menu theme from that game, composed by Takeo Miretsu. Man, really great theme. They really go for that sort of like jazz fusion, really funky, like really funky kind of... The drums have like a live feel to them, even though that is obviously a sample. But the way the, the kick drum is played has this kind of like improvisational feel. Switching up the pattern quite a bit and sort of wait, making you wait near the end of those bars. And then like cool kind of organ sounds like they're jamming. And then there's this like just weird that like that modulating synth for the pad in the background gives it like a really kind of otherworldly feel that I really enjoyed. Pretty simple. I mean there's only a few instruments in this, but it just really, really sets a tone. And does something that the CD era could do. But you could probably actually pull this off on a Super Nintendo in a way too. Just had like that higher fidelity. It's great, really mature, really fun, really funky. That's a great point. There will be a lot of themes that are just loops that don't really have an end to them. They just kind of keep going and going. Our next one, because Longbow is here, here's a track from Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown, the 444th Air Base, composed by Mitsuhiro Kitadani. And if Chris was here, I bet he'd really, really love those drums. I like those kind of syrupy, sweet strings over top. They really found, sound like they're from the 60s. 
um, that was a style they did a lot of movie composing back then. It really kind of sounds like something from James Bond. Especially with all the funk guitar. There was a lot of that like funky rock band mixed with strings back then in sort of like late 60s, 70s, early 70s. Film music and TV music. And I, I like all that kind of cyberpunky, just different layers and different kind of like polyrhythms. Keeps it really interesting. Sounds sounds like the synapses in your brain are firing off. And that bass, just it's a real bass, really low. It's got a lot of kind of grit on it. Really just grabs you and moves you. Really nice track. Next up from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle, you know it. Character select theme composed by Chikayo Fukuda, chosen by Rudy. simple track just got that crunchy power chord guitar a little bit of soloing the acoustic uh, is nice it's, it's like quite lyrical and it's uh, phrasing two acoustics there layered down really really light pitter patter of drums yeah that's an interesting uh, backing guitar the risky boots almost sounds like uh, waiting for the waiting for the man by Velvet Underground, just a bum 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 bum, just a constant pounding. Sound really cool on a low piano too. It does sound. I mean, it makes sense. You're in a character select theme. You're probably only going to be there for a few seconds, and it's just setting the tone, ready probably to explode. Once you select the two characters, I'd assume in the next screen they jam them up, and the music really takes off. Next up, it's a Cyphlin pick, so you know it's going to be from Tuhu. Imperishable Night on the PC in 2004. Imperishable Night, Eastern Night, composed by Junya Ota in brackets, Zoon. <laughs> has really nice sounds sometimes to the the two who stuff because it's always um maybe like what is it one person or it's made by uh fans right these games sometimes they you really hear a lot of the cheap sounds and kind of the limitations but i think the synth sounds they have over top of it and the pianos really really nice actually and because it's the menu and not the intense bullet hell insanity of uh, Tuhu. There's a lot of fan games that the main numbered ones are made by one guy. Oh, okay. Alright, that's why this sounds so good. Because this is one of the uh, main ones. Yeah, there's a mysticness to it. I actually really, really like this track. 
to be cool in like a cyberpunky kind of fantasy game. You come across some uh, temple in an electric city or something. It's cool. We're like like a uh, the newscast from 2055 from the the character just learns of a terrible disease amongst people with cyberpunk implants. Yes, that's the plot of Deus Ex. The start of round two from Shin Megami Tensei Five. This is the menu theme. Composed by Ryota Kozuka and Toshiki Konishi, chosen by Claudio. A cheery theme. Man, I really like that. Uh, like Claudio was saying, it has a cool lo-fi filter. Yeah, it's kind of, it's it's like, to me it sounds, the piano sounds kind of distant. It sounds digital, but like degraded. Like you were exploring uh, some wrecked civilization that had futuristic te uh, technology and you were seeing like an old broken hologram or something or a whole message. Yeah, it gives it a muffled kind of, uh, it takes out some of the clarity on the high end. really creepy sets a really great tone immediately and would make me definitely curious to play the game obviously every like Shin Megami Tensei track and Persona track has the potential to be great but just from hearing the beginning of that one I wasn't all excited but once it comes in it really has a lot to say well from the dark depressing world of Shin Megami Tensei we have Kirby's Air Ride the menu theme, composed by Shogo Sakai, chosen by Longbow. This track is so good. I mean, how many times do we see these games that look like they really could have gotten away with just about any kind of music and some composer goes out there and makes it their mission to make something bloody beautiful. You know what I love is that at the end of every line, it's like bum 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 And when you do that thing about kind of like starting from low, rising up, and then always snapping back down, it kind of gives it this feel of like you're pulling on, you know, something elastic and then snapping back. Just gives so much power to that first beat. Really powerful, really fun. Man, I love the uh, the synth pads and everything. And I've never heard of this game, but it looks pretty good. I mean, for Kirby's Air Ride, they're sure are spending a lot of time on the ground. This track really made me smile when I was doing all my prep work and listening to these tracks beforehand getting everything organized. 
And of course it would. It's composed by Nobuo Uematsu. Not from Final Fantasy, though. This is after Final Fantasy when uh, Sakaguchi started making different games. And uh, the people that were making, you know, Final Fantasy 7 and 8 and 10 took over. The game is Lost Odyssey. It's never-ending journey. The area selection chosen by Zenmus. <laughs> That's quite the difference. I wonder if Nobuo Amatsu thought, all right, I'm not doing this with Square. I mean, he, he is Nobuo Amatsu. You'd think he could always do whatever he wants. And after working on so many Final Fantasy games, I wonder if he thought, I'm going to do something a little different. He, we know he likes Brock, because when he came back to compose about that one track for Final Fantasy VII Remake, Hollow, it's a very, very rock band feel. Maybe he just really wanted to play some lead guitar. Maybe that's something that he felt like he didn't really get to do and he wanted to switch it up a little. You know? Maybe to him that was what Kaim was like. This guy. Lead guitar. He does have lead guitar hair. And that androgyny. We like in rock and roll. Is this where the guitar comes in? Next up from Ragnarok Online 2, this is the title theme composed by Yoko Kano, chosen by Horky. <laughs> Let's go. 
Man, this music is really beautiful, delicate, magical. It just feels like a whole world is blooming in front of you that you want to go out and explore. Music picks up at two minutes. All right. Sounds about now. up and gets uh, epic. I like this comment from Mexron Fids. They truly wasted Yoko Kano's talent in this shit. I will never forgive them. Next up, from Trails the Third, a, fla- a faint glitter of light composed by Ryo Taka- Takashita. Take a- Takashita? Chosen by Rudy. Alright, come on. So I played uh, played the wrong game footage, did I? How can you tell? Don't they all look exactly the same? Let's compare them. Um, anyway, this track, it's got that nice kind of delayed... Delayed piano that you hear in a lot of these uh, JRPG tracks. It is kind of a real dreamy feel. It takes its time, kind of plods along. Everything sounds very, very magical. Yeah, everything sounds really, really magical on top of it. Just kind of plods its way through. Super dreamy. Lots of reverb. Lots of delay. It does have kind of a Final Fantasy X feel. All right, now let's compare the two different gameplay footages I put up. Next up, from Samurai Warriors 4, available on the PS3 and Vita from 2014. This is Heavenly Voice, composed by... A whole team of people, Yojiro Yoshimatsu, Hiroaki Takahashi, Kensuke Inage, Michihiko Shichi Minoru Mukaya, from Siphlin.
प्यार है Yeah, this is pretty interesting. It's sort of like um like a world beat EDM kind of style festival dancing. Lots of swish swashy synth pads, hard drums, really kind of dance remix, dance dance 95. So I'm like <laughs> it sounds sounds like somebody who just got into raving in Sandstorm and then was only given uh, these Japanese instruments to play with. Ah. Solace found the track for me. From Chrono Trigger. Back when it really meant something to be sold by Squaresoft. Thank you uh, for solving that. Uh, round three from Super Smash Bros for the Wii U and 3DS. This is the menu theme composed by Junichi Nakatsuru, chosen by Claudio. Oh, yeah. Sounds like the Avengers are coming. Yeah, it's got a really heroic sound, especially with these this big trumpet here. But then when it all kicks in, it really sounds like actually a theme for us for like a football show, you know. But you hear this. Welcome to this sunny afternoon. We're here to see a battle between the Mario Luigi's and the Wario Waluigi's. It's a beautiful sunny day out there on the field. Both teams looking to execute their strategies to full execution, leaving people completely executed. The death penalty alive and well here in Hyrule Terminal Arena. But it has that kind of like glitzy sort of like corporate feel like you could see a, an orchestra but it's very corporate, very kind of like... Alright, this is NBC's coverage of Super Smash Brothers. If you're an eSports broadcaster, here's my tip. When something big happens, don't go, oh! Use words and describe what happened. Nobody likes when people yell, Oh! Maybe they do. Maybe I don't. I don't watch it anyway, so who the fuck cares what I say? Nice bass. Hey, this is from a game I don't know. It's called Dicey Dungeons. Your host for tonight is the track name. Composed by Chipzel and chosen by Longbow.
Wow. Man, I really like that. I wasn't expecting it at all. It sounds like Mega Man uh, with a sort of like chip toony. Really, really dancey. Really, really propulsive. I guess when you are scoring the music for a card game, you either lean into a card game being really, really chill, or you you try to pump it up. Pump people up for the game. Actually, maybe the music in the actual games itself is probably more akin to what's going on with the cards. Lots of thinking, slower, more thoughtful. But this is the menu. Gonna play a game. Gonna roll some dice. Oh, yeah. Oh, I called it a card game, which I, I guess is more of a dice game. But who the fuck cares what I think, right? Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, that was fun, but let's get serious. From Dragon's Dogma. Your host for tonight. Nope, that was the last one. Into the Free, main menu theme, composed by capital B apostrophe Z, however the hell you pronounce that, chosen by Zenness. Fucking weird. Do you remember what? Do you remember what the beginning sounded like? Oh, same chord progression, actually. God, it's so gorgeous. And then, like Horky says, Sonic just spin balls his way into here. Well, that is uh, fucking crazy. But I really love this part. This part makes me want to try this game, and then the Sonic part makes me think, what the hell is going on there? Hey, from Jet Set Radio Future, the concept of love composed by Hideki Naganuma, chosen by Horky.
really, really incredible drums. I love that. Uh, it's kind of like a guitar power chord thing. It kind of sounds like you sampled the sound cars make when they go by, like, and then use that as the instrument. Just like pounds. Such cool layering with the drums. So intense. Almost sounds like a prodigy track. I'm a fire starter, but a little goofier. A little more positive, a little more dancing. Not so into smacking bitches up. Well, let's check out from AI, the Somnian Files. This is the main menu theme composed by Keisuke Ito, chosen by Rudy. <laughs> Sounds like the beginning of the Godfather theme. Man, that has a lot of weight to it. Can you imagine putting a game on and this is the main menu? You'd feel like you're going to go into a story that has heavy themes. That is, uh, big choices. One where not, you know, a decision is going to hurt somebody. There's no perfect decision out of it. When I saw the name... I was intrigued. When I saw the art style, I was not so much. Although it is a nice version of cheap anime. But then the music makes me think, okay. And then when you say that it's made by the same person who did the Nonary Games, which are another series I've been meaning to try for a long time. Makes me feel like I'm one step closer. Thousand more to go. Hey, we have something a bit more upbeat. This is from the Streets of Rage remake on PC from 2011. The SOR Supermix. Composed by, originally, Yuzo Koshiro and arranged by Gekko Yamori. And Groovemaster 303 and BAC and BGM 1401 and Naoki Kodaka. Chosen by Siphlin. That actually segues in pretty nicely from the last two.
much to love about this. I mean, those pad synths, the way they, the chords that they land on, they don't resolve either of them. So you're left with this kind of like tension. The bass is actually like a, a long decay on a, like an 808 kick. Boom, 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 boom. And it stays on that same note, which adds to the drone and adds to the tension of those unresolved chords. The uh, swung hi hats, instead of just like da 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 da, super super dancey. Now you got a different bass line coming in that's still pretty droney, and then the dancey '90s piano. Holy crap! This has got to be one of the best of the week. Oof! Wow. I guess now we have to listen to the original. Yeah, I mean, this is this is still done really, really well. This is one of the greatest composers in terms of getting exactly what this this Sega Genesis chip can do. Oh my God! I mean, you can hear kind of in the melody; it's a little bit more. You can kind of hear the programming when they slide over the notes and stuff. Wow! X Cup. I like boxing and bonsai. X cop at 23? <laughs> That's a few short years. Coming up on our last couple tracks here. This one is from Sonic Riders Zero Gravity. Yes, if you were waiting, it did get in. This is the main menu theme, composed by Fumie Kumatani, chosen by Longbow. And doesn't this track sound really familiar? Not this part, but when it kicks in, it does like, wham, wham. Oh, it sounds like um, something from Final Fantasy 13 too. Like one of those time tracks. It's that high kind of violin hitting those uh, chords. This is great. It's got that real kind of futuristic kind of uh, dancey EDM vibe to it. It's a lot of kind of fun. Kind of like a worldy beat. I think Chris would really like this one too. Maybe he'll watch the God. Hmm. Yeah, man, the song pounds. All right, last track of the day. Thanks everybody for submitting. This is one I chose. This is from Super Mario 64. This is the file select theme. <laughs> Yeah. 
All right. I mean, this song's just such a nice little loop. It's got really warm synths. It's got that really hopeful wood instrument. Pretty simple, just a little bit of like, even the percussion kind of sounds like the wooden blocks. Almost sounds like big, thick wooden instruments kids would play, kind of bonk and... It was just kind of, all the instruments feel very three-dimensional as Mario becomes more 3D. Just love it. It's just so hopeful and fun. This guy, I like how the beat is kind of broken up. Just so you can sit there for a while. There's all these beats on the upbeat. Ba. Boom. Ba. Boom. Ba. Boom. It's almost like a Boston of a reggae or something. Beautiful. Well, thanks everybody for first off coming up with the subject for this week. And for all your uh, submissions. Orky, thanks for stepping in. And Zenmus, Claudio, Longbow, Rudy, and Siphlin. That was a lot of fun. Who knows what next week's theme will be. I will be in touch with the composer of the uh, the new Shadowrun games that come out. Shadowrun Dragonfall and Hong Kong as well as some other ones. John Everest. He's into doing an interview or maybe this kind of show. So we'll see. And I'll see you on Discord. I know I say this every time. Oh, I, I really want to get back and play some more Let's Plays, but we'll see when reality lets that happen for me. I haven't really been playing a lot of video games, so we'll see. But this show will be back, because this show keeps it going. Thanks. Shop it to prop your butt. Shop it to clop the play. Ah, yes. Thanks, everybody. I'll upload this video immediately. Get the higher quality edited version on there. And I will see you on Discord. I got so many games I should be playing right now. I'd love to play through some Stray. Um, all the Yakuza games are coming to that PlayStation catalog. And there's a bunch of different PlayStation and Premium Plus, whatever I paid for, that are on there. A few. Not a lot. It's not like Game Pass, but... Alright, thanks everybody. Goodbye.